the morning or whenever you see this. We left off with an exodus where Moses and the Red Sea taking the Israelites out of Egypt. The sea dividing. Exodus 14, 14, where um, the people are all like freaking out. The Egyptians are going to get us, blah, blah, blah. Or Exodus 13, 14. And Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Take your stand. Be firm and confident and undismayed. And see the salvation of the Lord, which we, he will accomplish for you today. For those Egyptians who you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. I need a t-shirt with this or this tattooed on my forehead. Because I'm the first one that will be freaking out over something. And I have to stop myself because... I need to be calm and silent and let the Lord do his thing. Not that he wants me to just sit on butt and do nothing, but to not think that I have to do it all myself. I thought that was important. So they get through, they sing this long song, poem type thing when, when it's over with and on the shore. As it's, it's kind of like in story form, so they remember it in song form to tell future generations. Meanwhile, later on, as they continue on, the people get grumpy and fussy and complaining-like, and they grumble at Moses, saying, what are we going to drink? So Moses cries to the Lord for help, and the Lord shows him a tree, a branch of it, which he threw into the waters, and the waters became sweet, because where they were, the waters were considered bitter, which, I don't know if it's some sort of mineral, I don't know if it means it was uh, stagnant or nasty, whatever, it's sulfur in it, I don't know. But what, it, what Moses smacked that water it became drinkable then the Lord made a statute which is like kind of a rule and an ordinance for them and there there he tested him as footnote God tests his people to see if they are learning from past experiences and growing in spiritual maturity oh does he now he said the Lord says, if you will diligently listen and pay attention to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight and listen to his commandments and keep foremost in your thoughts and actively obey all his precepts and statutes, then I will not put on you any of the diseases, diseases, which I put on the Egyptians, for I'm the Lord who heals you. Then the children of Israel came to Elam, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy date palms. And they camped there for a while besides that water. Then they left from Elam, and they came into the wilderness of Sin. Pronounce Sin. This is a side note. In Hebrew, it means the place. Although the words are spelled the same in English, Sin is not related in any way to what we call Sin in English which is an offense to God. The whole congregation there grew discontent and grumbling and murmured and rebelled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the Israelites said to them, what would you, what, 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 we, we, would have, we could have just died by the hand of the Lord in Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat and ate bread until we were full and ate, yeah. They're wanting because they're free and don't have free food for, well, they, like they did when they were slaves. Yeah. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this entire assembly of hunger. Side note. To understand the Israel's rebellious behavior, it is important to grasp, con to grasp the contrast between life in Egypt and nomadic life in the wilderness. Despite the hardships of slavery, survival was not an issue in Egypt where they were guaranteed food and other necessities, but the desert wilderness was hostile and unforgiving and survival was an art. Desert nomads needed to understand the wilderness in order to stay alive and they had to learn, among other things, how to protect themselves from the weather, where to find water and pasture, and how to find and prepare and cook scarce food or live primarily from what their livestock could provide them. So the Israelites viewed every new problem they faced as life-threatening 
Instead of looking back and taking comfort from God's earlier miracles, they doubted God's ability and willingness to help them. Their fears and doubts subsequently came to be expressed as irrational anger towards Moses. This means they had a slavery mindset. I try not to get too political on my channel, but you don't know sometimes just how much of a slave you are. If someone's handing things to you to keep you to do what you're doing, they, I need you, basically, who's in charge needs you to behave a certain way. But in order for you to behave a certain way and do what they want, they do need to feed you. And so to keep you full and fat for what they need to do or they want you to do. Just think about that. You take someone with a slavery mindset and you put them in freedom where they have to do for themselves they're going to freak out because they don't know how to do for themselves. It's, that's why they ended up all these things going on as this story progresses for 40 years in the wilderness. 40 years, the 40, the wilderness number I mentioned back when about Moses being in over there with his father-in-law when he ran off from Egypt the first time for 40 years. It took 40 years to get that Egypt mindset out of him. It took, it's going to take 40 years. This generation that left Egypt is all going to die off. No one that enters the promised land will have been born in Egypt, raised in that mindset, because you can't survive with that mindset. You won't fight. You won't, you don't, you don't have the will to fight. You were brought up with that mentality. Not that it was their fault, but it's just how it was. And God knows this.